All right, so some of you might be wondering how I was able to make this live stream happen for iPad music production. There's a lot that goes into it and I've spent probably the better part of, I don't know, a month and a half trying to dial in this setup for music production and for streaming. So we're gonna cover all the gear um, that I use to make that happen. And so what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna switch cameras real quick to this cam. What I'm doing is I've got my iPhone hooked up, and this is actually something I'm gonna talk about. This iPhone is my secondary cam. It's usually my overhead cam. You're probably used to this angle without the cable in the way. But yeah, so this is my iPhone uh, 11 Pro Max. So not the 12, just the 11, um, and it's doing pretty good. Let's check out what we got. So I'm gonna start with my main camera. This is the Sony ZV-1. I have a handle grip that you attach to the Sony ZV-1. That makes it possible to have two additional ports over here to mount with. It also allows you to have an additional cold shoe mount on the bottom, which is super helpful. So that way I can mount my light up top and then mount my mic down below. Um, this mic right here is the, make sure I got it right, the Tackstar SGC 598. It's like a $25 mic. Um, and it's what I use as my main microphone for all of my videos. So yeah, Sony ZV-1 is my main camera. Now you'll notice there's another lens on here. Um, this is the Ulanzi wide angle lens for the Sony ZV-1. Um, and the way that it attaches, basically a, a stick on sticker, and then you screw the lens onto it. And that's what you know makes it possible for me to get this um, look. If I had it you know, without the wide angle lens, we'd be cropped in quite a bit. Um, so that's been super helpful. And then uh, up here, just a basic key light. I don't remember the name brand. Oh, by the way, everything you see in this video is down in the description. I listed all of my gear and um, yes, they are affiliate links. So if you purchase something through the link, I do get a small kickback. Um, that definitely helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra to do it. So check out the links if you wanna get any of this gear down below. Uh, next on, we have the iPad Pro. This is the 2018 version, uh, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. Um, and I get this question all the time. What is your iPad mounted to? This is a hydraulic arm. It's a little dusty, sorry. <laughs> hydraulic arm is mounted to this monitor stand back here. And this monitor up here is also mounted to the same hydraulic arm. So what I did in order to attach this is it really, it's really just a magnetic back. So I can pop this off real easy. That's just a magnetic back. Literally all I do is slap this up there and it stays put and I can move this however I want. I can even lift it up and use it like as a main monitor um, when I feel like doing that. So, But the way I attached it, it's kind of janky so don't judge me. I used some Gorilla Glue and then sanded it and spray painted it a little bit just to make it fit. It's not ideal but it gets the job done. So this is the 13 inch 2020 M1 MacBook Air. This is a very capable computer. It's what's handling all of this streaming right now. Everything's running through it. Having a good computer for streaming is super important. I opted to go for a MacBook instead of the Mac Mini. It's only a slight hit in power in, in comparison to the M1 Mac Mini. It's really, really, really similar. But this is the base model, the eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, 256 gigs of storage, the seven core GPU, and it handles this all like a beast. So plugged into that is my CalDigit TS3 Plus dock. It's a Thunderbolt dock. I actually got this most recently. The primary thing I like it for is being able to have an extra Thunderbolt port. So I have two Thunderbolt ports here in the front, you know, using one for the cable. This one gives me an extra Thunderbolt port in the back with its own uh, independent controller. So it essentially turns my two Thunderbolt ports into three. Um, and then it's got a, just a whole host of other peripherals that you can plug into the back. So my monitor is running through there. Um, all my, my cameras are running into there. My audio in and outs running into there. And I'll talk about how I got that wired in a sec. So I'll show you this. Um, this is actually just the Apple digital AV connector. Uh, running into my iPhone and plugged into that is an HDMI cable and a lightning charging cable. The charging cable is connected to a power brick under the desk and the HDMI cable is running 
to a Camlink 4K, which changes it from an HDMI signal uh, into a USB to plug in to my computer. Now, one quick thing to mention about using Cam Links and using something like an M1 MacBook. Cam Links take up a lot of resources on your, your computer. Um, there's a lot that your CPU has to do to maintain them. So the more you add, the choppier your video feed can get. I am currently running two Cam Links and an Elgato HD 60s Plus, which is what I use to get my iPad Pro screen into this this whole live stream. That's how I did this shot right, right here. here. So those three things are pretty power hungry, but the MacBook can handle it. Now the thing is, I need to use a separate Thunderbolt port for one of these because when I hook these all up to the same dock, one of the feeds will get choppy. So that's something to keep in mind if you're doing an M1 MacBook. You want to have at least one Thunderbolt port dedicated to one of these capture cards. The next thing up is what's on my desk. So you have to excuse the cable. This cable is usually tucked back in the back where you can't see it. But because um, I'm showing this through my iPhone cam, it's running right now. But anyway, uh, this is my Apple Magic Trackpad 2. And yes, it is plugged in. I'm going to tell you exactly why I did that. I know I've said Said in a previous video that there was no way to have the magic trackpad go between two different devices. I discovered a way. My whole setup is a hybrid setup. I set it up to where everything can run either on the iPad or on the MacBook. So this trackpad can go back and forth between my iPad and my MacBook. Same thing for this keyboard. I can switch back and forth. It's Bluetooth. Same thing for this mouse. I can switch back and forth uh, between each. And then I have some audio switchers over here that I've set up for switching the speakers and things like that. And I'll talk about how I did that in just a second. Um, but yeah, the Apple Magic Trackpad is plugged in to my iPad. Now, when you plug in the Magic Trackpad to your iPad via cable rather than Bluetooth, it doesn't connect it via Bluetooth. So that means, you know, if I disconnect it via cable, it can still be synced up to another device like my MacBook. In order to switch between the MacBook and the iPad, all I have to do is press this button right here and that connects it to the iPad. And then I can just click it again to switch back to my MacBook, which is dope. And then this keyboard is the Sateki Compact Bluetooth Backlit Keyboard. Uh, you have th up to three devices supported. So I have my MacBook, uh, sorry, my iPad here, and my MacBook here. And then the same thing for this mouse. This is the Logitech MX Master 3 for Mac. I have a review of this on my channel. And it can also hook up to up to three devices by pressing this button here. It's a killer mouse. It's been serving me really well. So I can't believe I haven't yet mentioned the Stream Deck. This is my Stream Deck right here. I do have some custom icons set on it. So I have my main cam, you know, punch in here, split screen, and then I have the overhead cam, which is this one right here. And this, this is, is the, the iPad, iPad screen. screen. And then I have, you know, my media buttons and everything is, is programmed in there. And that makes it super convenient for managing my live streams. It's it makes all the difference. Let me show you guys under the desk real quick. There's some key things that I have mounted under the desk. So I'm gonna show you those. Down here is, mounted is the HD60S Plus that I mentioned from Elgato. Uh, what I really like about it is that it has HDMI pass-through. So I have my iPad running to my monitor as well as running into the stream feed. Um, and yes, there is a lot of <laughs> duct tape down here. And then this is the anchor dock um, that I have. It's a it's an anchor USB C hub that everything is running to for my iPad. So this is specifically for the iPad Pro, and I have power running to it right there. Um, and then over here is just a basic USB hub that's running to my Thunderbolt dock for my laptop. That's the main stuff that's under the desk. Everything else is just cabling that I've had to run. And then of course I have my amp here for my speakers and one really big 12 inch uh, woofer with a couple tweeters in it. So I didn't mention, I also have a ring light mounted up here in the top. And that is giving me some nice soft light because this whole area is white and it's almost like a giant soft box. I have my Audio Technica ATH M50Xs, you know, pretty much industry standard at this point. A lot of people use these big studios, small studios, home studios, um, sitting on a headphone stand. 
And then right here, uh, I don't remember the name of these, but I'll have to remember to include these down in the, in the description. But these are a couple of audio switchers. This one specifically is for my headphones. So this can allow me to go back and forth between my iPad and my MacBook just by the push of a button. And that was some clever cable routing to make that happen. And then this one is for my speakers. So, and I, by the way, both of these have volume control, so up and down, and I can even mute them. They're both muted right now. This one is for the speakers. So, you know, switch back and forth between the MacBook and the iPad just with the push of a button. Up here is my microphone. Uh, this is my Blue Spark. This is a pop filter here and it's on a boom arm so that I can easily pull this out when I need it, just like that. And I can put it back when I need to. Then over here, I know you probably noticed my Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. So that's my, my current audio interface that I'm using for my iPad. Everything's running into here. This is my microphone plugged in right here. And then I have a, a, a splitter running off the back here so that I can run some audio back into the stream. And then the other side's just going to the speakers. Also, you gotta have a succulent, come on. Who doesn't have a succulent on their desk? That's 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 a must. Also, I did mention my CME X key air. You guys have heard me go on and on about this. It's my MIDI controller of choice. Um, I'm enjoy enjoying using it. I want to check out the Sensor Morph so I can try some new MIDI. You might notice I have this thing sticking out here. It's kind of janky, but um, I just basically attached a uh, micro USB to USB-C adapter so that I can just plug this in USB-C. Like I don't use micro USB anymore for hardly anything. So having this attached is super helpful to just be able to charge via USB-C. Um, and I keep a cable magnetized. You probably didn't even see this. Boom right there, cable magnetized that I can just pull out and I can charge anything I need to charge and then put it back right there where you may never even see it. We got the speakers up here. These are the mica monitors. They're nothing fancy, but they get the job done. Um, my next upgrade will probably be these uh, to, to go up to some, some nice studio quality powered monitors. These run uh, off of an amp. I'd rather have powered monitors. I failed to mention that this is my overhead setup. Um, and so I, I just, it's kind of hard to move this stuff with one hand, but I'll show you that uh, basically I just adjust this and I mount my phone up here for the top down shots. And that's how I get, you know, my overhead shots. That's on a, it's on a small rig super clamp. It's actually all attached to, you know, with more tape. <laughs> I know some of my stuff is janky. Some of this professional stuff is janky, but uh, it's attached to a telescoping monopod and it can go out much further than that, but I definitely don't pull it out that far. Um, and that goes right back there when I'm not using it. And then the boom arm for my camera, my whole camera setup is attached to this uh, TV mount. This whole thing is on a TV mount. The reason I did that is because it keeps the whole thing not attached to the desk. Because when I'm playing music um, or if I bump the desk at all, I don't want the camera to shake and I don't want yeah, either of my camera angles to shake. So that's why they're both attached to the wall using the TV mount. So I also have a, uh, a phone charger. This is a wireless charging mount right here where I stick my phone when I'm not, you know, streaming or anything. I also haven't mentioned this monitor. Got some weird inception going on, but uh, this is my 32 inch monitor that I use for um, everything. My MacBook is hooked up to this and I have a switch on the back, I'll show you. Ooh, you know what, I better not do that. If I switch the switch, it might disconnect my computer. It might put my computer to sleep. I don't want that to happen. But suffice it to say, there's a switch right here on the back where if I press that button, this will show up here. So I can switch back and forth between my iPad connected to this monitor or my MacBook, uh, which is super clutch. And I did that with a basic HDMI switcher. Um, and that's also linked in the description. Oh yeah, I always keep down here, keep my water bottle, but I also keep my uh, Apple Magic Keyboard case. It is uh, the case I use all the time for my iPad when it's not sitting here on the desk. It's hands down the best keyboard case for your iPad Pro. I also didn't mention, this is a Subrent um, USB-C, or not USB-C, USB-A hub. And it's got seven data ports and three power ports. So these three right here 
are just for power and the other seven are for data. So each one of these has a switch where I can turn it on and off and that's connected to my iPad. I think that does it for gear. Now, um, I will say, you know, it can get tricky to try to interface all these things together. Everything I picked for this setup was handpicked because it worked well with the setup. Um, so if any of you guys are trying to do something like this uh, for yourself, if you have any questions, hit me up here, or you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Jarel Amani. And, oh, sorry, let me fix my mic. Okay, sorry, that probably, my mic probably got weird because of dual mics. And I will be happy to answer questions. So, hopefully you guys got something valuable out of all of that. Um, like I was talking about for the desktop setup, for the streaming setup, don't forget everything's listed down in the description um, if you want to pick up any of the gear I mentioned. Until next time, creatives, go make something dope, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.